What's up, what's up, what's up? It's your boy, The Network. And today's topic is section 3.20 or 3.20, configure and verify EIGRP stubs. This is a topic in the CCMP route exam, exam code 300-101 version 2.0. Let's take a look at the exam blueprint to see where we came from, where we are headed. Hashtag lab every day. This exam blueprint, implementing Cisco IP routing, is also known as the CCMP route exam. Uh, it's been a minute since I've done a video again. I took another break. I just had some things going on, so I took a, a real break. I'm sorry if you had been waiting on this, uh, like like the new Game of Thrones episode, but like I said, I had things going on. Um, so we wrapped up a couple weeks ago the part two section of EIGRP authentication. Today we're going to be doing configure and verify EIGRP stubs. After that, we're going to move on to load balancing of EIGRP. So we need to talk about part two of version or section 3.18, which was EIGRP packet types. We did part two because we introduced two new packet types, right? So what is an EIGRP stub? Before we even talk about EIGRP stubs, let's head to these slides real quick. Remember in the um, yeah version or section 3.18, we talked about the different packet types, right? We talked about the SIA or um, stuck in active phenomenon that occurs with with the older version of iOS, and, 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 and it's very rare for it to happen with a new version. Basically, a route a router goes down a, a route goes down on this side right here, and he has to query these other routers to know if they know where the other one is at, right? So now where stubs come in, actually, before just look at this network right here. It, it, if you look at this network, you can see it kind of resembles a tree in a way, right? I know you're looking at it like, what is this guy high on trees or something? No, I'm not, but I, I'll show you real quick. Hold on. Let's say you, you see, look at this tree right here, right? We got this tree. Let's go ahead and flip it sideways. All right. I'm going to move it over here. And let's go back to this. All right. So we got this tree, right? Now, this network right here is resembling a tree if, in a way. If you kind of look at it, well, maybe you smoke, whatever. But anyways, so remember, when a network goes down over here, router A has to query these other guys or ask these other guys, hey, do y'all know how to get to this route? Because it went down and I need another way to get there. That's essentially what you're doing. Well, if you look at this, um, let's say this is the network right here, this tree right here, right? Let's say one of these routers, or these are all routers, right? These, these leaves right here are routers or nodes, whatever, right? Let's say... A network over here goes down, right? So the router that was sitting right here at the root has to query these other guys where they're at, right? Well, if we chop this limb right here down, right, that will be a stub, right? So he's not going to ask this guy where it's at because we chopped it off, right? So he, he's not going to ask him. We, we chopped it off. We declared this side of the network a stub, right? We can do the same thing with this one. We chop this one off. It's a stub. We can chop this one off. It's a stub. They're all stubs, right? And y'all know what a stub looks like, right? It looks like this. Or we could chop it off right at the root, right? Right at the root. And it'll it, this whole thing will be a stub. So if a network goes down on this side of the router or the network, the router that sits here is not going to ask anybody else where it's at because it's a stub. It's been chopped off. He know not to ask anybody else how to get to this side of the network. It's going to look like this right here, right? Shout out to networklessons.com for this icon or this image right here. But that's what a stub will look like. And that's essentially what we're doing when we create stubs. We chop off limbs to the other networks and declare them stubs and say, hey, don't even ask me where it's at because I don't know. There's no other. It's like a dead end in a way. But there's different ways. Um, there's different type of stub networks that we can, we can create. As we go along to this um, these slides, I'll show you all what they are. Let's head over to the next slide. We talk about the official definition of EIGRP stubs. Yes, this one was from Cisco. A long definition. You can pause it, freeze frame if you want right here. I'm not going to read all this to y'all. We talked about, I basically gave y'all my definition of what a stub is, right? You want to read this? That's the official definition. I promised myself I was going to do definitions from Cisco, but that's the official definition right here. Here's a more simpler, concise definition from Eric Leahy. I forgot who he was. I think he's somebody that was, he had a, he had a, a website and he was just, chronicling his uh, journey to becoming a CCIE. This is his definition of a CCI, of, of, a, of a EIGRP stub. Stub routing is an EIGRP feature primarily, primarily designed to conserve our local router resources, right? Because we're querying other routers to find out how to get to another network, right? I'm not going to read this one to y'all. This was a little bit more concise. This is the 
Uh, get to the point. Tell me what a stub is. Just, just give me clear and concise. Tell me what a stub is. We configure routers as stub routers so they would not receive queries if a link goes down. Simply put. Simply put. But there's five there's five different ways on how we can control who and receives or what uh, queries or EITRP updates, right? So there are five different ways to control what types of queries, right? Asking and EITRPs will send or receive, right? There's one, receive only. The router will not advertise any network. So if we declare a router to be a receive only. He's just going to receive EITRP updates, but he's not going to he's not going to share his routes, basically. He's just going to be like, I don't know any other ways to get to the to the supermarket. Can you tell me some ways to get to somewhere else? Even though he know how to get there. He's just not going to advertise them. That's what receive only is. Connected. This is a default mode. He's just going to he's just going to um, the other uh, neighboring router is just going to advertise connected routes. There's also static routes or EIGRP stub static. It allows the router, a stub router to advertise static routes. I put routers. You have to redistribute it, though. Uh, and then there's summary. That's also a default mode. It allows the stub router to advertise summarized routes. So he will advertise summarized routes and he'll also receive some EIGRP updates. But that's it. He's only he's not going to advertise his static routes. He's not going to advertise his connected routes, only summary routes. Right. And then there's also lastly, redistribute allows the stub router to advertise redistributed routes. All right. So here's another example. Um, shout out to networklessons.com. I'm just going to start remembering the sources and just shouting them out. All right. So we got a network that goes down right here where this red X is, right? This is how, this is what a network will do when it does not have any stubs declared in the network, right? So this network right here goes down. Headquarters is going to send all these queries. All these queries are going to be flying through the Hey, hey, y'all know how to get this network. Y'all know how to get here. Y'all know, how to, right? Obviously, this is going to use up our memory. It's going to use up our CPU with all these, because everybody else going to have to send replies. Remember, because queries are considered reliable packets. So we're expecting a reply. Headquarters is going to send all these queries. Everybody else got to send us these replies. And all these replies are going to come flying around, using up our memory, CPU, bandwidth, etc. Right? That's what happens when there's no stubs. This is what happens when there is a stub. We've got branch router one and branch router two. They're now stubs, right? We just type in, I'll show you how to do it. This network goes down. Headquarters is only going to send headquarters two a query. Hey, do you know how to get to the one with the triple one O network. He's not going to ask these guys because they're stubs. They're considered dead ends. We chopped off those limbs. He's not going to ask branch router one and branch router two how to get to the triple one O network because we've considered it. We've declared them a stub. So it's kind of like he knows they're there, but he's not going to ask them for routes. He will only ask headquarters two. That's simply essentially what a stub is. That's what it does. Here's how you do it. The configuration. You just go to router config mode. So router yeah, or, yeah, router, EIGRP, and then the AS number or autonomous system number. In this case, it's router, EIGRP 12. And then once you're in router config mode, you type in EIGRP stub. And as you can see, I put a question mark there. And then you just pick which type of stub you wanted to declare this router as, right? Connected. We talked about what those are. Link map. I forgot what that is. I'll, I'll put a link in the description below. We're not going to go over it. We're just going to discuss the one, two, three, four, five. It's actually six. So we're just discussing those five. I'll show you all an example in GNS3. And how do we verify stubs? You just type in show IP protocols, and then you will see, once you do show IP protocols, you will see what type of stub it is. In this case, it's an EIGRP stub. It's only going to receive EIGRP updates. That router, this router right here, is not going to let other routers know about its known routes. It's only going to receive updates. So, and another way you can um, find out is just doing show IP route on the other router. And then you will see, have you learned any routes from that other router? Then that's how you know whether it's a stub or not. Well, that kind of helps you deduce whether that other router is a stub or not. The best way to do it is to go on that specific router, do show IP protocols, and it'll tell you whether it's a stub or not. So let's go ahead and fire up GNS3 and show you an example of how to configure stubs. Okay, so this as topology right here. Shout out to uh, network again, networklessons.com. Y'all check that dude out, Re Renee Molinar. He's got he's got lessons and labs all the way up from CCENT all the way up to CCIE. This dude is just 
he's like a, I, I want to say he's like a early 30,000 CCIE, whatever, but he's been a CCIE for a long time. He's been, he's a great website. That's where I got this example from. Actually, I'm sorry, gnsvault.com. That's where you can get this, uh, this lab right here. So, uh, let's go ahead and fire this bad boy up. Uh, question number one says here, configure router Thomas. As it, let's, let's go ahead and look at this uh, topology right here. We got router Thomas, Jack, Alfie, and then as you can see, this looks like a tree. This is exactly why we create stubs because it's it's essentially you're 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 kind of like chopping off this network right or this limb right here making that a stub and you know whether to um ask the other router or not if they know how to get somewhere else and then we got uh harry and charlie right here sitting at the roots right and all oliver is a hub so he know how to get everywhere basically until we start messing with the network and creating these stubs configure router thomas where's router thomas right here let's go ahead and console on him so it receives EIGRP routes, but doesn't advertise anything. How do we do that? That was simple. Let's go back to the slides and I'll show y'all real quick again. Pop quiz. How do you do it? Which one you think will do have it so that way it only receives routes? Simple, right? Receive only. These were appropriately named. So we want router Thomas so it receives EIGRP routes, but it doesn't advertise anything. Uh, we're going to use Oliver to test that theory too. Let's console into him. Let's take a look at what Thomas has so far. We're going to enable show IP route. This is Oliver right here. Oliver has all these routes right here, right? And uh, Thomas is got enable. Let's do a show IP interface brief. He's got the uh, 192.168.12.1, which is his fast Ethernet 00 interface. Where's that at? That's over here, right? And then we've got the loop bag that's sitting on him, which is the quad one, right? So that's what Oliver should be able to see. Let's go back to Oliver and see, does he see that? Yes, he does. There's the one network, right? It's via fast ethernet 2.0. That's over here. So he does see that on Thomas. Does he see the other network, which is 12.1, 12.1 right here. He does see it. 12.1 is right over here. 12.0 network connected, directly connected. So we're going to make Thomas receive only. So it receives the edge of P routes, but it doesn't advertise anything. Let's do that. Configure terminal. Again, we go to router config mode. I forgot what the process it is or AS number it is. So let's do a show IP, IP protocols. I already configured the IP addressing as well as the EIGRP, um, EIGRP. So EIGRP one, right? So we'll go back to, we'll stay on Thomas. And then we're going to router EIGRP that e i e i g r p one sure we're gonna need to turn the number lock on one one can't tie today e i g r p stub and it will only receive let's look at our options receive only receive only neighbor we're gonna make him a receive only neighbor so receive only and now you can see e i g r p bounced went down came back up let's take a look at let's confirm that we did our show ip protocols already right right so you can see he's not a stub yet right at that point right now if we do a show ip protocols you can see now he is a receive only eigp stub right now let's go back to oliver and see what i see from thomas we go on, go back on oliver as you can see eigp bounced on oliver as well goodbye received came back up so eigp bounced show ip route can we see the loopback and the um, connected interface? We can't see. We can see the connected interface because it's directly connected. So it's physically there. It's going to be there. But we can't see the one network. Remember, there was a quad one network. That was, where is it? It was here. Now it's no longer there, right? So he knows if, if, if a network goes down over here somewhere, he know not to ask Thomas, hey, do you know how to get to, you know, whatever network back here? Because, well, he not connected to it anyway, but he know, either way, he know not to ask Thomas about any routes because he's a stub now. So what was the next one? Configure router Harry. Where's Harry? Harry's right here. Shout out to my boy, Harry. Uh, console. Con configure the router Harry so it receives EIGRP routes and only advertises directly connected networks. So Harry's directly connected to, so here's Harry right here, right? Harry's right here. He's directly connected to the 25.0 network, 192.168.25.0 network. He's also connected to the 
192.168.56.0 network. So he's only going to, we want him to advertise only those networks. And that's it. But receive also updates. So uh, we want to advertise directly, only directly connected networks. I think you know how to do that. Pause it and think about it. We back. That's pretty self-explanatory, right? Let's take a look at the slides and what they are. Those are our options. Which one do you think it is? Connected, right? Do of it. The advertise only connected routes. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go to Charlie and see what Oliver can see from Charlie down here. So we're going to console into Charlie and let's do a show IP interface brief. He's got the 56.6 which is this interface right here, that physical interface. He also has the quad six loopback, which is on him. So Oliver should see that. Let's go back to Oliver. Show IP route uh, through EIGIP. He learned about the six network right here. And he know about the 56 network right here through EIGIP as well. So I believe both of those should be disappear. At least the, at least the quad six should disappear. So we're gonna see, so Oliver should be able to ping Oliver should ping Charlie, right? Be able to ping him, right? Ping 6.6.6.6, right? So he can ping him and he can see the loop back on Charlie. Now, if we're going to we're gonna make Harry only advertise, as it says here, only directly connected network. So we're only going to advertise the 25.0 network and the 56.0 network. Let's go back to Harry. All right. And uh, we're going to go to config mode, global config mode. And then router config mode, so router EIGRP. These are all process number one again. So one EIGRP stub, and then we're only going to advertise connected networks. So in this case, it's just connected. Simple as that, right? So now he's only going to advertise this network and that network. He's not going to advertise the loop back from Charlie. Can Oliver ping Charlie now? Which was back there, right? Ping 6.6.6.6. .6 .6 .6. And he no longer can ping it. So he can no longer see uh, ping Charlie anymore because Harry's not advertising it anymore. Can he see it in his route table? Can Oliver see it? Show IP route. See, we can see the connected routes, right? The 56, which is right here. And we could also see the 25.0 network, which is obviously directly connected to us. That's who Harry is advertising. Uh, we just no longer can see the um, the loopback, the six network. Remember, it was in here. It was, where was it? It was right here in all of his rod table. So what's the next one? Configure router Alfie. Alfie is right here. We're going to console into him. So it only receives EIGRP routes and only advertises a summary route of 4.4.0.0 slash 16. So let's go ahead and configure the summary route. First of all, so... Actually, let's see what we can see from Alfie, what Al, what uh, what Alfie has. Alfie, I don't know why, Renee Molnar from uh, Network Lessons. Again, this is his uh, his apology. He created this. I don't know where. Does anybody know what this is from? I don't know. Yeah, pop quiz for y'all. I don't know if this is, uh, is that from Annie? I, I don't know. What Do y'all let me know where this is from, where these names are from? So, IP interface brief. That's y'all pop quiz for the day. Uh... We got the physical interface of 24.4 and then also this loopback, 4.quad4, which is on Alfie. Can Oliver see them? He should be able to. Go back to Oliver. Show show IP uh, route. So he can see the quad4 network there, right? But it's 4 slash 24, right? That's variably subnetted, variably subnetted. And we also have... Uh, what was it? The directly connected one, which is the 24.0 network. This right here. Where is that at? Uh, right there. Right there. And we want to only advertise a summary route. So let's go on Alfie, create a summary route. So we got to go to router conf global config mode. I believe we got to go to the routing process. A summary route first. So router, EIGRP1, IP summary address. Or do you got to go to the, I believe you got to go to the, to the uh, interface to do that. So in this case, interface FA00, exit, interface FA0 slash 0, IP, summary address, yeah. And then the summary address of 4.400 slash 16, so which is 4. Dot, no, I believe you got to do EIGRP first and then the AS number and then IP address of so 4.4.0.0 slash 16, which is 255.255.0.0. .0 .0. 
and we don't want to change the AD or leak map, leak map allowing dynamic prefixes. We're just going to leave that as is. We created a summary address. It is on the interface. We want him to only advertise just that. Take a look at this and what y'all think it is, right? We're going to go into a global config. We're in global config mode. Uh, router config mode, EIGRP1, and then EIGRP stub. We are only going to do just a summary route, right? Simple. These are pretty, again, they're appropriately named. Some functions in the iOS are not appropriately named. So we should just advertise just that summary route. Uh, what did Oliver see? He did see... That's what he saw at first, plus the connected route, right? The 25.0, which is, no, 24.0, which is here, as well as the, the loopback on Alfie. Now, what does Oliver see? So, as you can see, EIG IP bounced, show IP routes, and now we see there's the summary address. That's the summary address, and we no longer do we see the 24.0? Yes, this directly connected to us, so it, we're gonna be able to see it only. We're gonna see it anyway, even though it says only advertise summary routes, we're gonna see directly connected routes anyway. It's directly connected to us, it's physically connected to us. Last one configure router Jack, Jack's right here, console into him. So it only receives EIGRP updates and only advertises static routes. Let's go ahead and go into Jack. And configure that static route. Jack is right here. Let's uh, let's create a static route. Configure global config mode IP routes. Let's just do a um, let's do a route to anywhere quad zero. Uh, no, let's do this. Let's do to get to the 192.168.23. Let's just make one up. 25.0. Um, 255.255.255. Let's not do 25.0 because there's already one night like that. Let's make one up. Destination prefix mass 255.255.255.0. Uh, take the next hop of. Uh, let's do loop back. Let's do loop back 10. Let's do loop back 1. Let's do loop back 0. All right, so we just created a, a, just a just a arbitrary static route, and what does he say? We wanted to uh, only advertise static routes. What does Oliver see from Jack? Exit, exit. Show. I'm um, see. Oliver sees from Jack. Show. IP routes. Oliver sees from Jack. He sees the 23.0 network, right? Where is that at? Does he see? Yep, he sees that. That's right over here. He also should see Jack's loopback. What's Jack's loopback? Show IP interface brief. He sees the quad three. So all of us should see quad three. Where's that at? Right here. So we're going to make it to that way. It only advertises static routes. How we do that? We're going to go back to Jack. Back to Jack. Uh, global config mode terminal. Router config mode, EIGRP1, uh, EIGRP stub static, right? And that should make EIGRP bounce. It did. Let's go back to Oliver. Goodbye, I've received. It bounced on Oliver as well. Show IP route. Does he see the uh, the loopback, which was the quad? Jack had the quad three and the 23.0 network. Oliver no longer sees quad three. And he no longer sees the 20. He sees 23 still. That was directly connected to us anyway. But does he see that um, that static route? What was that static route that we created on Jack? It was 30.0, loopback zero. Where is that at? There it is right there, the arbitrary route that we created, 30.0. So um, can we ping? We obviously probably won't be able to ping that. What is it? Three? Quad three? Yeah, we should not be able to ping. Pro so Oliver should not be able to ping Jack's loop back, which was ping 3.3.3. And as you can see, it's hanging. So now that we've took this tree, we've taken this tree and essentially created stubs out of these. Oliver knows not to, the first one was, don't advertise anything, right? He know not to ask Thomas about 
anything because it only receives, right? He know not that we made this a stub right here. So this is, it's, it's almost like, don't even ask Thomas about routes. If you had a network going down somewhere, Oliver also, um, we configured Harry to directly advertise only directly connected networks. So we know only to ask Oliver. I mean, we know only to ask Harry about directly connected networks. And then we know only to ask Alfie about the summarized route. We know not to ask him about anything else. And Jack, we know only to ask Jack about a static route. Don't ask Jack about anything else. That's essentially what we're doing when, when we create stubs. That's all I got for y'all today. You know how we do? We're going to lab every day. That's how we do. We just got to keep doing it until it, until it stays ingrained in our mind. That's my YouTube channel right there. Please comment, like, subscribe. That's my Twitter handle if you want to add me on, on the Twitter. I try not to stay on there, but I, it just calls me. I, I always be on there anyway. Um, please comment, like, subscribe to the network.